Hey, welcome to Bible Floss. Derek here, and the Latin Vulgate was the Bible that the Western Church relied upon for over a thousand years. In it, it translates this Greek word into this Latin word by which we get this English word. Then this guy came along and created this system of theology, which became the basis for the study notes of this Bible, and from which we get this book, these movies, these TV shows, these adult novels, these children novels, these graphic novels, and these video games. Whoa! talk about building an industry. Today I'm going to discuss dispensationalism, where it came from, what it teaches, and how it became so popular. So let's go. The primary meaning of the Greek word oikonomia is to manage one's household or to administer one's household. It's not really a theological term. There's nothing really special about it. Twice in the Bible it's used specifically in relation to God's relationship to mankind. Once in Ephesians 1.10 where it's talking about the future, how God's going to manage mankind then, and once in Ephesians 3.9 where Paul's talking about this age that we live in. Historians and Bible scholars have said that there are few as two dispensations, the current dispensation and a future dispensation dispensation because that's what the Bible says while others say there's as many as eight dispensations but most people say well there's seven dispensations pretty much correlating with the seven covenants. Now it is important to emphasize one last time that the word dispensation is just a normal word referring to management or administration. There's nothing technical or theological about it. Anyone can use the word dispensation or believe in dispensations and not be a dispensationalist. Okay, so what makes a dispensationalist? Well, John Nelson Darby around the year 1830 took the idea of the dispensations and put into it a whole bunch of ideas creating a system of theology called dispensationalism. The key belief of dispensationalism is this insistence on keeping a distinct separation between Israel on one side and the church on the other. The second distinctive behind dispensationalism is a consistent literal interpretation of the Bible. And when you put these two ideas together, a literal interpretation of the Bible mixed with the belief that Israel is a separate people of God, you get the idea from dispensationalism that the promises in the Old Testament relating to Israel have not been fulfilled yet. God promised that David's heir, the Messiah, would come liberate Israel and rule on a throne in Jerusalem, fulfilling all the promises remaining in the Old Testament. But that didn't happen because when the son of David came, the Jews rejected Jesus and he was crucified. And this brings us to two key ideas within dispensationalism. One is the rapture. It is the belief that in order for the promises made to Israel to be fulfilled, the church needs to first be taken out of the way. And the second idea is premillennialism. But in order to understand premillennialism, let's go to the whiteboard. Revelation chapter 20 is the only place in the Bible where the idea of the millennium is found. The earliest Christians had two ways of interpreting the millennium. The first is amillennialism, which taught that the 1,000 years symbolically referred to the whole age of the church. The second is premillennialism, which taught that there would be a literal future 1,000 year period at the end of time. During the Reformation, a third view arose called postmillennialism, which is the idea that 99.9% .9 of the world will one day be evangelized before Christ returns. Charles Darby and the Dispensationalists built this system of theology around the premillennial model. But it is important to note that historic premillennialism is covenantal theology, which sees Israel and the church as being one man in Christ, whereas dispensational theology is based on the idea that there are two different people of God, two different plans, and that Israel and the church must remain separate and distinct. This means that while premillennialism has always been an idea in the Christian faith, dispensational premillennialism is not the same as historic premillennialism. It was invented in 1830 with Charles Darby. When Darby invented dispensationalism around the year 1830, postmillennialism was the common, the popular view because it seemed like everybody was getting saved. In America and Britain, we had the revivals of Jonathan Edwards and George Whitefield, John Wesley and Charles Finney. Christians everywhere were optimistic as it seemed that the world was just converting to Christ. 
But in 1909, C.I. Schofield, who loved dispensational theology, published the Schofield Bible, which became the number one selling Bible in the 20th century. The notes were filled with dispensational theology. And in fact, the line between the notes and the biblical text himself wasn't quite clear, so that when people read Schofield's dispensational theology, they sometimes thought they were actually reading the divine revelation of God's word. And when 1914 happened and World War I broke out, people lost their optimism that the world was getting better and that the world was getting saved. Post-millennialism as a view was dead in the water. The Jehovah's Witness all set up on rooftops as they waited for Christ to return, while the Christians were all converting to dispensationalism like there was no tomorrow. Then in 1948, the unthinkable happened. Israel became an actual nation again and seemed to confirm everything that dispensationalism taught in the Schofield Bible. Then about 30 years later, Hal Lindsey published what became one of the best-selling books of the 20th century. It was called The Late Great Planet Earth. And in it, he strongly implied that Christ would return 40 years after Israel became a nation. And in the 1970s, four motion picture movies were put out called A Thief in the Night based on dispensational theology. Then in the 1980s, a former NASA engineer named Edgar Wisenot published a book called 88 Reasons Why Christ Will Return in 1988. He mailed, free of charge, over 300,000 copies of his books to pastors right across the United States and over 4.5 million copies sold in bookstores in the U.S. alone. Then in the 1990s, Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins began their work on the Left Behind novels which to date has sold over 65 million copies with spin-offs into three full-length motion picture movies and a fourth one's coming, and 40 spin-off novels written for children, as well as graphic novels and video games. Dispensationalism has become so engrossed in our culture that many people, Christian and unchristian alike, believe that dispensationalism is simply a part of the Christian heritage going all the way back to the Church Fathers, when in fact the view itself is less than 200 years old. But being a new doctrine doesn't discredit it. Ultimately, Dispensationalism stands or falls based on a study of the scriptures. So is dispensationalism true? Well, you know what they say. If it's fiction, it's got to be true. And as they say in the Bible, Shalom. Thanks for watching.